Within a place called Laos, a landlocked country in the heart of the Indo-Chinese peninsula, is probably one of the most confusing archaeological sites on Earth. We have often covered possible evidence left within countless newspaper archives, log witness testimonies, and indeed many stolen bodies of a type of ancient human far larger than we are today. Additionally, there have been many intriguing ancient giant artifacts which have been found at many sites around the world, tools, utensils, and structures, created in such scales they would be virtually useless in the hands of modern-sized people. And our archaeological site within Laos could perhaps be seen as one of the more compelling remnants, possibly left by this gigantic race of humans. However, what is seemingly the most perplexing mystery regarding this site is the aptly named Frogman, discovered at the center of this entire historical puzzle. Known as the Plain of Jars, it is an enormous ancient site, littered with countless giant stone jars, manufactured to such a scale, they are clearly too large for any practical use by humans of today. Numbering over 400 at just one site, the original purpose for these stone jars high up in these locations, if indeed they were manufactured by our ancient ancestors, is a question which has evaded modern explanation and may remain impossible to answer. Out of the many hundreds of jars, it would seem none were ever decorated. All remained completely blank, except one single jar. A single giant jar adorned with the image of a frogman. According to academia, the jars date from the Iron Age around 500 BC, although any compelling reasoning for this remains elusive. It is undoubtedly one of the most important prehistoric sites in Southeast Asia, and it undoubtedly deserves more attention. Who carved these enormous jars? Why make them to such enormous and thus impractical sizes? Where did the stone come from? Or indeed, how were they carried to their final resting places high up on these plateaus? Were they possibly made by a race of giants? Who is our Frogman character? Was this single image a signature, left by the original makers of these giant jars? Unfortunately, we may never know. Our last video covered the astonishing ancient city found in Sri Lanka which was somehow built atop an enormous rock formation. Known as Lion's Rock, it is a testament to the ancients' capabilities and determination. And our next location is just as incredible. Known as Nan Madal, it is an ancient site located within the middle of an ocean near to the Mariana Trench. What makes Nan Madal so incredible is the fact that the entire city was once built upon the water. An entire series of artificial islands, canals, and fortified city limits. What's more, the entire location is built entirely from enormous blocks of basalt and coral. Built using a unique set of sophisticated techniques not found anywhere else on Earth. The site's supposed original name was Saun Nan Leng, or Reef of Heaven, and according to Gene Ashby, in his book Pompeii, an Island Argosy, the ruined city is one of today's greatest archaeological enigmas and is sometimes actually called Atlantis or the Eighth Wonder of the World or even the Venice of the Pacific. According to academia, Nan Madal was the ceremonial and political seat of the Saudalur dynasty, which unites the islands of Pompeii's estimated 25,000 people until as recently as 1628. Set apart between the main island of Pompeii and Tenwen Island, it was a scene of human activity as early as the 1st or 2nd century AD, with the perplexing megalithic architecture apparent only beginning in 1200 AD. However, comprising of almost 100 stone and coral built platforms atop artificial islands separated by narrow channels, enclosed by an outer seawall, Nan Madal is an engineering marvel. A truly mammoth undertaking that, yet despite the enormity of the undertaking at such a distant time within history, there exists no records as to when, or most importantly how, Nan Madal was ever built. 
Additionally, there is no evidence of any quarries on any of the nearby islands or indeed the reefs surrounding the site. Where did these enormous rocks come from? How were they transported there? And how, or indeed why, was the site constructed on top of the reef? For a technologically primitive people, apparently placed a mere 1500 years in the past, to somehow have created this entire artificial floating city, made from enormous pieces of coral and basalt foundation, using techniques apparently not known prior to construction, yet somehow successfully constructing buildings that have lasted well over millennia, seems a rather ridiculous and extremely unlikely premise. Additionally, to have no evidence of a quarry anywhere to be found makes the whole complex that much more confusing. The total area of the enclosure is around 75 hectares. Walls were as high as 15 meters and up to 5 meters thick. The average weight of each stone is 5 tons, with some weighing as much as 50 tons. With an estimated total weight of columnar basalt making up the city's construction at around 750,000 metric tons. Nan Madal is undoubtedly an astonishing place. We recently covered the astonishing rock-cut structures known as Madain Sala. The precision involved in the cutting of such a remarkable collection of buildings will not have escaped the astute-minded among us. Just how did these civilizations, two or even three thousand years ago, manage to create such awe-inspiring structures, with the tools available at that time within known history? Just as the pyramids in Giza are attributed to the Egyptians, it is highly possible these claims of ownership were but mere inhabitations of sites far older. Many people who have investigated these rock-cut tombs have come away with a conclusion that some of the architecture is so precisely cut, to recreate such straight angles would require the use of laser technology. A presumption also shared by us. It is therefore delightful when one stumbles upon something such as al Nasla, Located within Tamiya Oasis, also within Saudi Arabia, was this utterly perplexing stone left as a lasting signature of the tool used to create Madain Saya? Discovered by Charles Hoover in 1883, was this amazing megalith cut in twine with a laser, or indeed some form of highly advanced, highly ancient precision equipment of some form? If not, what could have created such a miraculous split so finely made and so straight within such an enormous rock? A perfect line straight through the center left perfectly balanced upon two separate bases for untold millennia. Interestingly, in 2010, the SCTH, or Saudi Commission for Tourism and National Heritage, announced the discovery of a rock near Tama with a hieroglyphic inscription of Pharaoh Ramses III upon it. Researchers have therefore hypothesized that Tama was a part of an important land route between the Red Sea coast of the Arabian Peninsula and the Nile Valley. Was al Nasla, along with Madei Sawya, constructed by the same individuals as the Great Pyramids of Giza? Furthermore, archaeologists have discovered cuneiform inscriptions, possibly dating from the 6th century BC, pertaining to a legendary ancient civilization known as Oasis City. Mentioned within the Old Testament, it was said to have been a highly developed civilization with complex buildings and an advanced knowledge of waterworks. The oldest mention of Oasis City appears as Tiamat in Assyrian inscriptions dating as far back as the 8th century BC. Were these mysterious people the culprits? With such precisely made rock-cut structures found within the same landscape, structures that many have reluctantly concluded display evidence of advanced stone-cutting technology, we find the existence of al-Nasla highly compelling.